You've been asking for it. You've been asking for it for a long time. And now you're going to get it. Ninja. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Media Channel. I'm your host, William Hugh. You know, Nary a week goes by that I don't get a load of messages off my viewers complaining that the Windows Movie Maker I use in my tutorials is nothing like the Windows Movie Maker they have on their computers. They say, it's completely different. Please, show us how to use it. Now this strange beast of which they speak is called Windows Movie Maker Live. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive. It's alive. Now, if you've got the live version of Movie Maker on your computer and you'd like to know how to use it, then get a load of this. Open it up and this is what Windows Live Movie Maker 2012 looks like. Unlike normal video editors, it has no timeline or storyboard as such and consists of just three main areas. The Edit Preview Panel, the Project Area and the Toolbar up here. Now the easiest way to show you how this works is to create a small video. So first we will need to bring in some clips. And this is done by clicking on the Add Video button. Locate your files. This is a QuickTime file. Click Open and provided it's a Movie Maker compatible file it will show up here. And you can play it by clicking on the Play button here. Now if you see black bands around the video like these here it means you are editing in the wrong aspect ratio. To fix this, just click on Project and choose Widescreen. And there go the black bands. Good. Incidentally, if you need a bigger preview screen, it can be altered by simply grabbing this border with your mouse and moving it. Just choose a size that works for you. And as you play the video, your position on the clip will be shown by this travelling cursor bar. Now there is also another way to bring files into Movie Maker which you may find easier. And it's this. Simply find the file you wish to import, such as this JPEG picture, and just drag it and drop it onto the project area with your mouse. Just like that. So now we have a video clip and a still picture to work on. OK, let's just play the clips to see what we've got. Ah, now straight away I can hear that the video soundtrack has some unpleasant wind noise on it. It would be nice to get rid of that for the purposes of this particular video. And the way we do it is this. First select the particular clip by clicking on it. Now click Edit. And over this end of the Edit panel you will find a button entitled Video Volume. Which refers to the clip we have just selected. So we click on that and move the slider to zero effectively muting the clip. Now click home again and play the clip. And as we can hear it's nice and silent, just the way we want it. Now the various elements of your edit, in this case the video clip and picture, can be moved around in any order you wish by simply dragging and dropping them like this. But supposing I wanted my picture in the middle of the video clip. Well, the first thing to do is place the cursor line on the place in the video where you want to have the picture. Or indeed, a different video clip if you prefer. Now click on Edit and then click the Split tool, which will split your clip into two. Now this split will not be noticeable when the two halves are played together, but it does allow you to arrange them separately if required. It also means that I can now drag and drop my picture into the join like this. So now when I play the edit it goes from the video to the picture and then back to the video again. As we play our edit you will notice that the transition between one clip and another at the moment is a straight cut. But it doesn't have to be that way. By clicking on the Animation tab here, we can choose a more decorative way of moving from one clip to another. Just hovering your mouse cursor over each transition button will produce an example of how it will look on the screen. 
but it won't actually apply that effect to the clip until you click it. Now I'm going to choose the classic crossfade transition, so I click on it. Now because each effect is applied to the beginning of each clip, this produces a nice fade in on the first clip. Now I'll select the middle clip and select the crossfade again, which produces a nice crossfade between that clip and the one before it. And finally I select the last clip and apply a crossfade to that as well, producing a nice transition to all my joins. One problem with all the clips though is that they are rather static with not a lot happening. But if you hover your mouse over the pan and zoom effects on this part of the toolbar, you can see that you can also apply effects that look like the camera had been panning and zooming. An excellent way to liven up static shots. So let's try them out. Selecting the first clip, I'll apply a tilt up to the hill. Very nice. Now selecting the bridge picture, I'm going to choose a pan that looks across the length of it. This one should do the job, so click on it. And there we have it, that's excellent. So we've looked up, then across, and for the final clip I'd like to look down from the hill back to the river. Now this effect would seem to do the job. So click, and it's done. So now when I play the edit, it looks up from the river, across the bridge, and down to the river again. Excellent. Now there is a huge selection of fancy transitions that you can play with, as you will see if you expand the transition box by clicking here. Now they really are great fun to try and the best way to learn about them is to simply play around with them and see which of them work best for you. But it's not just transitions that you can apply. Clicking on the visual effect tab here will bring up a wealth of effects that you can use to enhance your editing. They work in exactly the same way as the transitions and you can see what effect they will have by hovering your mouse over them. Now these fancy effects, wonderful as they are, are not needed on this particular video. So let's move on. Now let's add some text to our video. Click on the Home tab and we can see the three forms of text that can be applied. We have Titles, which are obviously applied to the beginning of the video, Captions, which are applied to the body of the video, and Credits, which are applied to the end. Let's begin with the title by clicking here. Now Movie Maker has applied the titles where the cursor line lay, so we'll just drag it to the front like this. Now again we can see how the titles will look by hovering over the buttons like this. And the box can also be expanded by clicking here. Now I think I'll go for this title style here. So I'll just click on it to apply it, and by clicking on the text label here, we are able to alter the text. The position of the box can be altered by moving the anchor points like this. And by selecting the text like this, we can type in any title we like. We can change the font by selecting it from the list here. There's lots to choose from. I think I'll go for this one. And these buttons here control the bold, the italic, and the text colour. I think the yellow looks quite nice. The size of the text is controlled with these buttons here. And these three buttons allow us to justify the text to the left, the right, and the centre. And should you need see-through titles, this can be achieved by using the transparency slider here. We also have controls here to edit the text, change its background colour and alter the length of time that the text displays. But for simplicity's sake, I'm going to go with the default settings. So let's just click play and see how it looks. Hmm, that's great. 
Now let's put some credits on the end of the video, and the process is very much the same as it is for the titles. This time, let's place the cursor at the end before we start. Now click Credits, and check out the examples. Again, when we expand the box, there are plenty to choose from. And I think I'll choose this one. Now I'm just going to select the text and add Made by Me. But you can add anything you fancy. And of course, the same text tools are available here. So let's have a look at that. Very nice. But there's a bit of a sudden transition here where the credits come in. So I'm going to go to the transitions again, and I'm going to add a crossfade, which will match up with the other transitions. And now we'll just run that to see how it looks. And that's much better. Now for the final text edition, I'd like to label the view of the bridge. So first we need to place the cursor on the picture of the bridge, at the place that we want the text to appear. And now we choose the Captions button, and alter the text to our requirements using the same tools as before. In this case, I'll label it The Fairy Bridge. I'll bump up the size a tad, and I'll use the same font as I did in the title. Now check out the different caption styles by hovering over the buttons, and I think I'll go with this one. Fine. Now I'll just run the edit. And that looks pretty good. Most of our movie is now done. All that remains is to add a little background music to accompany the bucolic scenery. To do that, we simply click on the Add Music button here, which will open up and offer us a number of different options. We can either find music online with these three options, or we can use music that we already have on our computer. As I already have a piece of music in mind, and have it on my computer, I'm going to click on this option here. Now just locate it. It's in this folder here, and there it is. So just select the file, and click open, and Movie Maker adds the file, which is in WAV format by the way, and it even cuts it to length for it to match the length of the edit. How good is that? So let's play the edit now and have a little listen. Lovely. There is one problem though. Although the music fades in nicely at the beginning, because Movie Maker cuts it to length, it ends rather abruptly, as we can hear. What we need is a nice fade out at the end, and to do that, we need to select the music by clicking on it, and then click on Music Tools, Options, and as you can see, we are offered Fade In which it doesn't need as it already has one, and Fade Out, which is what we need. Now a click offers us four different styles of fade, and I'm going to choose the medium fade. So just click to apply it, and let's play it and have a little listen. Excellent! And that's it! The edit per se is finished. All that remains now is to render it into an actual video. Now at the end of the toolbar here, are a few options for rendering the video and uploading it to various places such as OneDrive, Facebook, YouTube, etc. But you can also save your video to your computer by clicking the Save Movie button here. And that's the option I'm going to go for. So. I click on the button and we get a list of many different settings that we can choose from, many of which are labelled to show you what they would be suitable for, such as YouTube or Vimeo, etc. There are also settings to burn a DVD, produce small files for emailing, and many others. However, I'm going to save my video to my computer as a high definition movie, so I'm going to click on this one here. Now just choose where you'd like to save the file. I'd like it on my desktop, and down here you can choose to render it as an MPEG movie or a Windows Media file. I think I'll go with the MPEG. And because of the title we chose, Movie Maker has suggested the name of My Movie. Which is nice, but I'm going to change it to My First Movie. There we go, all done. 
Now just click save and Movie Maker will now render the edit into a video. This may take some time depending on how long your edit is. Once rendered, Movie Maker will inform you of the fact and give you the option of opening the folder where the file is held or you can just click play to view it straight away. So let's do that now and take a look at the finished movie. So there you go, Windows Movie Maker Live. It's free and it works. So go make some movies and I'll catch you next time on, on the, the Media Channel. Channel. Media.